Team, do you copy? What's the situation on the field? Over. <laughs> Don't jinx yourself now, buddy. Optimal weather conditions will make the mission easier for you and me both. Over. Keep your guard up! If my sources are accurate, I'm like 90% confident we'll find something in this place. What do you mean you're done funding the club? The OHSIC is an incredibly important resource for students to explore their spirituality, their heritage, their culture! Listen, Mr. Potts, I've pulled enough strings letting out the club for so long in the first place, but I can't defend you when we're not seeing results. You still have a freaking anime club! All they do is watch movies and spend money on imported snacks! That's gotta be violating some kind of rule about appropriating funds or something! First of all, it's the Japanese Culture and Heritage Club. Secondly, they actually retain regular members, as do many other clubs. If you can't engage with the students of this university, they're not really providing anything of value. Space is a premium, too. You know that everyone on campus is going gaga for that newly proposed juggling club. And they'd appreciate a room that's barely being used as it is. The juggling club? The juggling club! You can't do that to us! Another way! Please! What do you need us to do to save the club? All you need is a few more members. Doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you can show us that the OSICO is still relevant to the student body. OHSIC. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yes, that. Okay, okay, here's the plan. You know that old house way out there on the corner of town? That old Gallagher place where all those deaths and murders happened ages ago? We've never checked it out! We thought it was too boring, too vanilla. But no! Maybe we made a mistake trying to find new things when we've left the biggest stone in town unturned. Tomorrow, we're gonna investigate the old dump. I just know there's something we can find in there. It's our last hope. Vice Prez, tonight we're hitting the books. Research like your life depends on it.
Uh, status? You've been a little quiet. Over. Don't get cold feet now, buddy. We need you now more than ever. You've dealt with the paranormal before, and you've rocked their world. Are you worried about your lines? Sorry, no can do. You've got to look the part for when you fall into the cold, dead arms of Elias Gallagher. Over. How's the rose? Then go for it, buddy. You're about to change our lives. Shoot. I don't really know if they did, or why you're asking me that. Ghost clown? No! Why would you even suggest such a thing? I don't want to think about it. Quit stalling and start the mission already. How's it looking in there, bud? Is your sixth sense tingling? That's reasonable. I think it's time to summon a ghost, then. Uh, this is my cue to throw tomatoes at the stage, right? <laughs> I 
<laughs> all right, all right. Keep up the good work then, buddy old pal. Truly a riveting performance. 10 out of 10, Oscar worthy, or whatever. Black, black, what blood is this which stains the stony entrance of the sepulchre? Wait, who was that? What's happening over there? Fresh blood in my esteemed estate, stained on a red rose no less. A tragic sight indeed. But not quite so tragic as the one who stands before me. Pray tell. Who are you, and what is your purpose here? Bud? Hey bud, what's going on over there? Ah, oh, you poor dear. You and I are not at all dissimilar indeed. I am well acquainted with tragedy, and know that your wounds need tending to at once. Tell me, would you like to forget the cur who broke your heart? Nonsense, my dear. I can melt away your anxiety and regrets, for it is within my power as long as you remain inside these four walls. Now, will you accept this rose, darling? Wonderful, darling. Now even death won't do us part.
Oh, God! I've tried to, like, 50 times already since the call dropped. What the hell happened? Are you still in the mansion? Hey, hey, bud, don't clam up now. Describe your location. Wait, a bedroom? Huh, maybe the door was locked and nobody got in? This place is a known party hub after all. Maybe the co-eds and whoever else wrecked everything they could reach, but they just couldn't get into here. Yeah, what's up? You're kidding, right? Ugh, yeah, alright, you're right. Let's play 20 questions to catch you up to speed here. You're really asking me- Ugh, Sorry. You're on a field mission to investigate Gallagher Mansion, so we can find evidence that ghosts exist, therefore proving that the OHSIC still has value to Zephyr University Student Union. Besides finding a ghost, we're also looking to see if we can figure out where that old Gallagher fortune might be. Treasure hunting isn't our primary goal, but it's worth keeping an eye out for. The newspaper clippings we found always said how huge the inheritance was, but some assets were never accounted for in the banks. Rumor has it that the Gallaghers kept part of the fortune somewhere in the estate. The Gallaghers were a well-off military family from Europe who came to America in the mid-1800s. Archibald Gallagher, the patriarch of the family, found success as a cornmeal baron. He married a woman named Mildred, and together they had a total of seven children. All of the Gallaghers were quite exceptional, except for... Elias was the black sheep of the family. All of his other siblings were born strong and healthy, but Elias's birth came with a lot of complications. Pretty much the epitome of the sickly Victorian child trope.
A lot of rumors say it was some kind of curse, but no one can agree on why they were cursed to begin with. The eldest child died first in a horse accident or something. After that, it was a chain of freak accidents in short succession, completely unrelated to the previous deaths. But without fail, it would always kill the next eldest child like a line of dominoes, hitting the rest of them in some pretty gruesome ways. I think Archibald and Mildred Gallagher weren't too happy about having to write Elias down as their sole heir once the others were gone, but somehow he'd managed to dodge the curse. Then, not long after amending the will, the parents drowned in a bridge collapse on what was supposed to be a leisurely carriage ride. Same energy as scented candles setting fire to your apartment. There was, still is, plenty of speculation about Elias spinning elaborate murder schemes to take down his family. But the thing is, Elias had few people to write letters to, and even fewer people who'd write back. Elias became a permanent shut-in after becoming the head of the Gallagher estate. Eh, I'd probably do that too if it happened to me. That would be Violet and Gerard Dupont. Gerard was the Gallagher groundskeeper, and after the rest of the family died, he decided to get a little ambitious. Don't think that guy was gay, though. Otherwise, I imagine he would have gone after Elias himself. So he introduced his sister Violet to Elias as a fellow heiress without a partner. You can guess what happened next, right? Everything but the wedding, yes. According to the newspapers we dug up, Elias died the night before his wedding ceremony while the Duponts were caught red-handed tearing the place apart, looking for the Gallagher fortune. Uh... <laughs> uh... I, I, uh, that's because the last mission I sent you on wasn't a real thing. That was a fake paranormal incident. Hey, after we posted your reactions on the internet, we did get some new members. Of course, bud. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold your horses! Aren't you feeling lightheaded or dizzy or anything? You know, I've been trying to reach you for two hours. Were you even aware you've been gone that long? Maybe you had like a concussion or something. I kept hearing that guy's voice, and a rush of air. So, was it really Elias? No, of course not! So you really did see THE Elias Gallagher? Okay, I'm coming in. We have to get you out of there. O-H-S-I-C.
It's a tactical retreat! I was kind of prepared to find a ghost, but not for you to go MIA for two whole hours! So, if that ghost had the power to put you to sleep, he must be a lot stronger than we anticipated. You two just met! That, that's rushing into things! Right? Yeah. Okay. Look, I'm still coming in to give you a hand. I trust that guy about as far as I can throw him. Which isn't very far, well, considering, you know, he's a ghost. No, no, no! You stay right there! We have no idea what that dude's up to! Okay, then. I'll stay put for now. But if we're gonna do this, then you need to give me a status report. really has returned to its full glory, is it because of Elias? If it's not freezing in there anymore, that has to mean something. I think you've really awakened him. Your presence has given him something he hasn't had in forever. I think this house conforms to his spectral energy. You've made him happy. You've satisfied part of his wish for romance, but I... Mm. I, I want you to be very careful about how that wish gets entirely fulfilled, okay?
My dearest, oh, wait there. Please, my dear, you mustn't wander around. Things remain out of sorts. And here I thought I had been quiet so as to not disturb your slumber. Sincerest apologies for rousing you from your rest. And yet, that changes little about the unreadiness of this manner. After all, I have to do all this cleaning myself. Simply look at the state of this study. Oh, it's so far gone from its glory days. Didn't you say it was pristine? Just wait, and be amazed. I will have to find new staff quite soon. Sadly, they did not stay with me as I left my body behind. Oh, if only they had. On the contrary, arrangements must be made with all haste. Our wedding, of course. Your heart. I can hear its soft, gentle tears fall upon your soul. I promise you, my dearest, that a heart does not heal easily. No matter how many tales of tragedy and hardship one may read, reality is much more painful. Why, my own heart has been broken more than a dozen times over the course of my life. And alas, it has never once healed only turn to an aching scar. And I have tried my damnedest to ignore these wounds, to let them bleed out and coagulate into some semblance of strength. But it left me sickly instead. If a heart is to be mended, surgery must be immediate. And here before you is someone who can mend your broken heart. Someone who can cherish you. Stay with you. Create happiness for you. I never had that chance in my own mortal life. And after so long, my dearest, I want you to choose happiness, not sorrow. And I want to be the one to give you that happiness. Whatever you do, do not trust him at all. But also, don't do anything to upset him. Play it as cool as possible. Elias gave you a very thin rope to walk. Don't fall down. Do you understand?
Yes. Yes. We shall do that. But I cannot wait forever either. The taste of eternity I've already supped upon is nigh unbearable. Join your groom in helping him plan our wedding. Now let me think. Ah, I'd love your assistance with the floral arrangements. I have all the flowers of New England in my hands. It shall be difficult to select only a few. Of course! And after that, a cake. I know my grandmother's recipes are still in this house, and I should set off on finding them. I've tasted them all when I was still in the flesh, and they're delightful. As such, I leave the choice of cake to you. And finally, since you'll be marrying into my distinguished family, I'm eager to bestow upon you a gift suitable of that prestige. I shall lead you to my treasury and introduce you to the family jewels. Precisely! Let us begin. Take my hand, and I'll lead you to the greenhouse. Hey, partner. How are we holding up? After you. You shuddered a little. Is there a chill, my dear? I did, but no longer. Behold! Voila! My dear, your flowers.
And there's more. Much more if these don't delight you. And which will that be, my dear? I see, I see. They may be delicate, but they're passionate. Lyre flowers, also known as bleeding hearts, lady in a bath, or even Venus's car, are flowers representative of a kind soul. And what other perfect petals may we pick for this bouquet? There are many accoutrements to select from. I trust you to choose well. of dreams and kindness and consolation. Flowers of purity, reverence, secrecy. The stone crops are tranquil, serene, a cure for a broken heart. Yes. They're very familiar choices to me. Uh, and perhaps familiar to you. What bouquet did you carry to the altar before? Crap! Didn't think he'd actually ask that. Uh, make something up! I'm so sorry. Perhaps that was too much for you at this moment. But I do think you are being hasty. The flowers are lovely together, but the liar flowers are so dominant. A little too passionate. Please do, and take your time. Nothing will hurt you here. I will make sure of that. Uh-huh. Sure you will. Again, the hell? Violet. Hey, status report. You're cutting out again.
Hey, are you there? Everything went static for a minute. No, you didn't. I left the flowers there after all. You chose fairly, and you made a beautiful bouquet. I apologize for worrying you. I assure you that won't be necessary, but thank you. I should clean this up. My gratitude to you. I'm afraid I must take a moment to gather my wits before I look for my grandmother's recipes. I'm flattered, but a bit of privacy would be appreciated. You may, so long as you stay on the ground floor. And please, excuse the state of disarray the rooms may be in. Okay, you alone? Who was that woman? I heard someone whispering through all the static. A woman, I think. Didn't sound like anyone I recognize. Is her spirit there too? Yeah, take your time. Hey, are you doing all right now? Might be time to see what you can get up to before your rendezvous with Elias. On the second floor. Yep. What about it? It's probably a portrait of one of the Gallagher ladies. What better way to flaunt wealth and status than by paying someone to preserve your likeness with expensive materials? Probably the precious family jewels Elias was telling you about. Anyways, I'll look into this and see if I can get an exact match for who it might be. Keep hunting around? Anything interesting there?
All of them but Elias. How big are the antlers on that deer anyway? Did you know that in the winter, deer, moose, and other mammals who grow antlers will just shake them clean off? Maybe they shot that deer in the spring when it was regrowing them. You think so? I feel like they're too inaccurate. If a gear stops turning or the battery dies out, then you have to manually set it again. Digital clocks hook up to the internet so they don't have that problem. I wouldn't doubt it since the Gallaghers had this place built just for them, but I wouldn't know where they are. They're secret for a reason. Tell me what you're looking at. I finally got a match on that painting from earlier. Check it out. That's Mama Gallagher herself. Mildred loved to host tea parties and dances at the manor. Always made a grand show of the family bling while she was at it. She was the envy of the land until that Gallagher curse killed her. Anyways, that's one mystery solved. Think there's anything else in here? <laughs> Roger that. What else is in there? Take a look around and tell me if there's anything interesting before you indulge in literature again. No dice. Keep at it, bud. Your dream will come true one day. C 
Can you stick to the mission, please? Which one? No, 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 we are not talking about clowns! I don't even like blueberries, and waffles are superior in every way. They can hold syrup, melted butter, or whatever you top them with, so you lose less to your plate. I am not putting food on my face, or my face into food. No, no, end of conversation. Get back to the mission. Of all the things in this mansion, you're thinking of stealing the light bulbs? Eh, fair enough. Hey, want to know another fun fact? Thomas Edison didn't actually invent the light bulb. He bought the patent from two dudes named Henry Woodward and Matthew Eben. Edison was able to claim fame thanks to the fact that he had enough capital to finance improvements to the design. My point was that popular history gets written by the winners, but that works too. Let me know what you find. Right, Elias wanted to bake a cake for you. Would he even be able to eat it? Uh, can you say that again? I think my mind's coming out again. Can you hear me? Answer if you can hear me! Are you okay? Were you attacked? Static took over the line again, and I heard something garbled from your end. Some kind of whispering or chanting? Was that you? Hey, what did you see?
I'm starting to think there are some other spirits in this mansion besides Elias. Why else would there be interference when he's not even in the room? Goodness, are you quite all right? Why do you look so pale? It's been like, what, 20 minutes tops? Forgive me for leaving you to your own devices for so long, dearest. I am here now, so there is no need to linger in the despair of solitude. Worry not, my love, for my years in the flesh prepared me for such an existence. I am not forgotten. Even before you came to me, there would be the occasional visitor to my manor. None quite so welcome, mind you. Most were in a stupefied, intoxicated state. Good entertainment, but not the company I'd choose to spend the rest of my waking moments with. Unlike you, my love. Man, this guy is just... ugh! Why, yes, a splendid idea. Our wedding shall be oh so fine. The layer cake most of all, unforgettable. Nana's baking divine, and when paired with white wine, to not taste it would be quite regrettable. Oh, though I do miss her cream pies as well. Shame those aren't quite appropriate for a wedding. <laughs> oh my god! Did he just say cream pie? She wrote the recipe in a manner such that you could make it in any sort of flavor, so long as you had the proper ingredients. Say, what flavor shall our cake be, my dear? I was quite partial to Earl Grey myself, but vanilla is always agreeable no matter the party. Though perhaps a delicate lemon with hints of lavender. Hmm. I must have misplaced grandmother's dessert recipes. I can't find them. Where did I leave them? I know I have seen it within the past decade at least. Hey, here's our chance to look for more clues somewhere else. I am loath to ask my betrothed to make up for my mistakes, but yes, I would appreciate your help. Unfortunately not. I do know that it must be in the manor, however. None of my possessions have left the grounds. I will investigate the common room. Take care where you may search, and be cautious of the second floor. I have done my best to stabilize the structure, but... Uh, it does take quite some energy. Is he finally gone?
Well, you never got to hunt around the study since Helias was hanging out in there. But I wonder if you can find his bedroom. We also have no idea what caused that vision you saw earlier. Not a bad plan. Archibald Gallagher made his office in that study, so he talked business deals there. I know about as much as you do. Perhaps one of those shuttered small businesses cast black magic on the family in retaliation for Archibald, using them as a stepping stone on his way to the top. Mr. Archibald Gallagher was known to be a rather stern and ruthless businessman. What does that mean? Unless he took a nap, he'd have to have been doing something. Sounds good. Blast it all. Your sister died earlier this spring, and already we have to make arrangements for the next funeral. Father, if you would let me speak just once. What is it, Elias? I don't have time for idle chatter from a child like you. I am not a child anymore. I am already of age, and I'd like to make a single request of you. It will- And what would that be? My mirror has been in need of repair for the longest time. If you could have someone restore it. What mirror? G Grandmother's mirror. The one that used to be in the attic. It shattered. But I still have all the pieces. You still have that trash in your room, and you dare ask me to repair it after you broke it? It wasn't me, it was- I have no time for your childish sentimentality, Elias. That mirror is worth nothing, and I have much more pressing matters to attend to. Leave now, or I'll have one of the servants remove you! Father, I can walk on my own two feet just fine. Ha! 
copy? Hey, do you copy? Another vision? Give me a status report. A mirror? I'll see what I can find out about it. Was there anything else? Actual fuck! Take your time to catch your breath. Let me know when you're ready. So close, yet so far. What's wrong? Wow, that's ominous and not helpful at all. What does it even mean? Nothing else? Good news, my dear. I have recovered the recipes. No need to fret any longer. It's all right, my dear. Now then, have you decided on a flavor? Choose Funfetti! Choose Funfetti! Excellent choice. You have the most wonderful taste, my dear. Please, let me handle the remainder. If you wish to rest, please, I encourage you to do so. Hey, bud, you sound really exhausted. You should find some place to sit down and rest. Is it at least clean? So how are you feeling? 
You've been through a lot, and that's the understatement of the century. Maybe we should go over everything we've learned so far. Assume you have a little, so talk as fast as you can. Are you afraid you're digging too deep? Okay, maybe take a step back and... But... Definitely. I still haven't found anything online about whatever mirror Elias was talking about. Did he mention how big it was? Like, are we talking a hand mirror or a standing mirror? Do you think it's a red herring? Though, breaking a mirror is pretty bad luck. Maybe it's the source of the curse. That would definitely be something we can boast about. Solving a centuries-old curse. I'm just not sure you should tackle that tonight. Honestly, and I mean it this time, I want you to leave this place. There's something very wrong going on. Nothing we read said anything like this would happen. Please, we don't know what kind of tricks he has up his sleeve. I don't want you to fall for anything he might be up to. Bud? What? You didn't bring a portable charger? I'm coming in. I'm not leaving you alone in there with no contact. I'm responsible for that much. Stall for time! I'll see you soon! Over and out! My dear, can you come to the living room?
Oh, my dear, you look paler than me! What on earth happened? You've been talking with someone else? I thought you expected me. A fair question. Well, I have faint memories of catching specters out of the corner of my eye. Unexplained disturbances and whatnot. But I have not conferred with any ghosts like the two of us have chatted. Certainly not in life. And... Did you just meet this friend today, or...? Marvelous. My dear, how wonderful it is that you finally found me. Though, would you have sought the hand of any other ghosts you may have met? And as for your friend, how exactly has he served as a medium? So, to contact him again... You'd have to leave? Oh, is that so? I... Well, he's heard about the wedding, yes? Our wedding? Well... I suppose a wedding without guests isn't much of a wedding. Everything is just about in order for the ceremony anyway. And I hope your friend realizes how safe you are with me by now. He can wait outside for a little while we finish our preparations. Shall we go ahead and place the final touches on this affair? Now then, shall we? It is time to show you my precious family jewels. Do not fret, my dear. These stairs are safe as long as you stay by my side. Careful now. Hmm. 
Hmm? You mean, making it look like a ghost of its former glory. <laughs> Admittedly, yes. It's quite tiring. But if it makes you comfortable, then I shall keep doing it. It also brings back... many memories. I appreciate your kind words, my dear. Just a moment, my dear. Here we are, then. Do not hesitate, dear. Choose whichever your heart desires. Do you like it? It was one of my mother's favorite pieces in this collection. It's also the most expensive. Here, allow me. Of course. I must confess that I was born quite sickly, and my birth came with so many complications that it nearly killed my mother. Even after that ordeal, there was nothing the doctors could do to help my weak constitution. I suppose that's why my father and siblings treated me the way they did. I was seen as a nuisance, a problem. I don't entirely blame them. It's far away and in the past now, so enough about that. Marvelous. The necklace fits you perfectly. As I mentioned, this was my mother's favorite piece. It grazed her neck quite frequently. My... my previous bride.
Her name was Violet, Violet Dupont, the sister of our groundskeeper. We never wed because she betrayed me the day before our wedding. I suppose she and Gerard were desperate. I should have been on my guard when they continued to ask me about the location of the family jewels day after day. I thought the necklace, the grandest piece in the collection, would have been enough to hold her interest. I had promised to share the rest of them with her after our consummation. But before I could even cry out for help, Gerard held me down while Violet... No, you needn't apologize whatsoever. There's no need for me to reminisce, and you shouldn't have to compare yourself to her. You've seen the greenhouse already, so you can imagine its splendor in full bloom. I quite liked reading on the bench there when my energy permitted. It was quite difficult to visit in a consistent manner, however, so I often had flowers brought up so that I could enjoy the fragrant floral bouquets in the comfort of my room. Aside from the flowers, there was also a family heirloom that belonged to my grandmother. It was an antique silver mirror, and a very charming one at that. At least... <sighs> that was... before it shattered. I liked it quite a lot, and ended up taking it out of the attic in my early childhood. I used to look into it and imagine myself as some sort of fair prince. It was innocent daydreaming, but alas, my six older siblings would often mock my love of the mirror, and with such a weak constitution and gentle demeanor, there was little I could do. When six people who aren't very fond of you get physical, well, you can imagine what might happen. The mirror was shattered, and I was the one blamed. Grandmother didn't seem to mind that it broke, but I cried for days. Maybe it was sentimentality, guilt, or fear. But whatever the case, I simply could not let it go. I forbade any of the maids or butlers to toss out the shards. The mirror was meant to be a wedding gift, and I was determined to have it fixed one day. Yes, it was one of my greatest regrets when I died. Silly as it sounds. Thank you for understanding, my dear. I am quite eager for our union. I think it'll be something glorious. I've always wanted a grand wedding, and to think I'll be marrying someone as lovely as you. Come, follow me outside. I have much to show you. Soon we shall be wed, my darling and we'll have all of eternity together. Are you excited?
My love, what's on your mind? Are you ready, my love? I have worked tirelessly to prepare the old ballroom for a ceremony, and while we may not have any guests, I do hope that you will be pleased. Excellent. Then without further ado... Welcome all, family and friends. Thank you all for coming today to partake in this joyous occasion. Today we are gathered together to unite Elias Gallagher with his beloved. Long has he suffered, and now long shall he be overflowing with joy. Let the memories of betrayal, of murder, of waiting be washed away like leaves in a flood. Love has triumphed. Do you, Elias Gallagher, take this person to be your lawfully wedded spouse, to live together in matrimony, to love them, comfort them, honor and keep them, in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold from this day forward, now and for all time? I do. Do you, my dear, take Elias Gallagher to be your lawfully wedded husband, to live together in matrimony, to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold from this day forward, now and for all time? That's... that's right! This has to stop! You should have told Elias the truth ages ago! I should have told you the truth ages ago. My dear, is this the spirit medium you are talking to? Taylor, why do you interrupt our ceremony? Speak now or forever hold your peace! Oh, have I got some words for you, Gallagher. All of this? All of this is for nothing! This was a dumb attempt to find a ghost, and now I've put my best friend in extreme danger. They didn't actually believe anyone was here. In my heart, I didn't believe it either. 
I was desperate. But we did our homework and read that you were obsessed with romance. The idea of it, at least. They aren't actually in love with you and have never been engaged to anyone before this. We went shopping for fancy clothes to trick you into appearing. So stop all of this. We're too young for marriage. We're both just college students, for goodness sake. We have our whole lives ahead of us. Elias, you should be mad at me. I set them up to do all this. But I should have been the one here, not you. I think we should let OHSIC disband. We need to go home. It's over. My dear is right. They have been perfectly able to choose what they like. I provided plenty of opportunities and... Yeah, and they were playing you. Our goal was to prove you exist. Now we have, and I regret it. Besides, do you even realize what rushing into marriage does to people? What if it turns out that you two don't even like each other, or can't even stand being in the same room tomorrow? I don't know about you, Elias. There's only so many tabloids that we can salvage all the way back from like a hundred years ago. But have you ever had to watch your parents fight with each other behind closed doors? Rushed, unhappy marriages lead to divorce. Maybe your parents got along fine. Maybe they didn't. But if this was a regular wedding between you and Bud, you'd be waving a red flag for the whole state to see. Mom and Dad tried so hard to pretend things were okay when I was growing up. But I wasn't stupid. I saw the exhaustion on their faces. I heard what they said to each other. No one deserves that. I... Besides, after all this, I realized... I'm jealous! Oh, all this time. Me, I assume. There's a rival suitor vying for your affections. It's true. I think you're great, and I really, really like you. I've wanted to tell you that for some time. Since about the day we met, to be honest. But you were such a good friend. A kind friend who supported me in everything I did. But you were such a... I... I was scared to lose that. I was scared to make everything too big. But I guess I found a different way to make everything too big tonight, huh? What a charming and sad story, Taylor. How could I not be moved? But, my dear, I need you to tell me the truth. What did you come here for? I see. But not all of this was a lie, was it? Your demeanor changed as we spent time together. You got to know me. You learned about the real me. And I think your heart opened. Oh no, come on, don't do this! I get that you're lonely, but you're completely missing the point here! 
Taylor, please. Where we go from here is up to them to decide. Then I shall do my best to answer. I do not know. None of the deaths were connected, at least not to my knowledge. And contrary to popular belief, I did not orchestrate those accidents. I'm not a cruel person, and I hope you can at least attest to that after tonight. We did? Yes. I was simply admiring myself in the mirror's reflection when they came to snatch it out of my hands. I tried to keep it safe, as it belonged to my grandmother, but... Six versus one isn't very fair. And your parents probably didn't side with you on this, did they? So then, the curse. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's enough of an explanation as any. Then even my own death at the hands of the DuPonts was part of the curse's doing, just as I thought. Actually, if we go by their explanation, I don't think Violet Dupont jamming a dagger into your neck was because of the curse. You two technically weren't even married yet, and that whole stabity stab thing was a textbook example of premeditated murder. You know, the opposite of a fatal accident? You were so desperate for love that you ignored your gut instinct about something feeling off with Violet the entire time. I... I see. So if I were to carry on with the wedding and marry them, then they too would die of the curse. <laughs> if that's the case, then I'll never have my wedding, even in death. Hang on, I think I have an idea. If we're right about the mirror needing to fulfill its purpose as a wedding gift, then all Elias needs to do is give you the mirror after the ceremony. El Elias, I'm really sorry for shouting at you when I burst in. I was venting about a lot of personal stuff that doesn't remotely involve you, and... and you didn't deserve that. And Bud, I never should have forced your hand into doing the field mission for me. At the very least, I should have come sooner to provide backup. But if you two trust me on this, and you're willing to try, everyone can have their happy ending. At least, I'm like, 95% sure this will work. But weren't you opposed to our union? Maybe they did get to know you better tonight. I shouldn't tell them what decision to make. 
So, as you said, let them decide. I... Yes. I suppose your hand in marriage is all that I had asked of you when we first met. And so, I graciously accept this arrangement. Do you take Elias Gallagher to be your lawfully wedded husband, to live together in matrimony, to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold from this day forward as long as you both shall exist on this plane of existence? And do you, Elias, take them to be your lawfully wedded yada yada etc etc as long as you both shall exist on this plane of existence? I do. By the authority vested in me, as the official president of the Occult History and Sciences Investigation Club, I now pronounce you married! And now, my dear, all that I possess in my mortal years belongs to you. Yes, please come with me to the study. Quickly now. Here we are, my will, freshly written. With this, the mirror has been transferred into your possession, my beloved. I, Elias Gallagher, former head of the Gallagher Estates, hereby leave all my material possessions, including the Gallagher family jewels and the manor itself to my beloved partner. I mean, a will written by a ghost would never hold up in court, but for the sake of breaking the curse, I think this should work. It will. My wish for a wedding of my own has finally been fulfilled. And now, it is time for me to depart from this world. I am an ancient relic of decades long since past. A memory of a life tethered to this land. But now that I am married to you, I am free. Mr. Taylor Potts. Yeah? Take good care of them in my stead. If you make them sad. I may come back to haunt you. I plan on it. The, uh, taking care of them part. Please don't haunt me. <laughs> Very well. Live and prosper where I could not. Farewell, my love. May we meet again in heaven. Is your last name really going to be Gallagher now?
Holy cannoli, we're rich! Who cares about the details? We can repair the entire mansion and, like, actually live in it! And then we don't have to pay rent!